Good morning, everyone. My name is Minjoon Kim, and I'm here with my colleague, Daniel Sien. And today, we're going to be diving into the mysteries of blood clotting in space, specifically by monitoring the rate of fibrin clot development under microgravity conditions. So, let's imagine that you get a cut. What happens? Your body senses that a blood vessel is broken and triggers a complex and rapid response that effectively prevents blood flow and blood loss. Now, first, the blood vessel constricts to prevent blood flow to the area. Additionally, platelets are activated, small cell fragments, to the area and they adhere to create a platelet plug. And then simultaneously, a series of biochemical reactions known as a coagulation cascade are initiated in order to create a stable fiber mesh that reinforces that platelet plug and effectively stops the bleeding. Now, let's dive deeper into this coagulation cascade. It begins with clotting factors which are proteins present in the blood plasma. When the injury occurs, the cascade of these clotting factors allow prothrombin to be converted into thrombin, which is an active enzyme crucial to clot formation. Thrombin then converts chromatogen, a soluble plasma protein, into fibrin monomers, which then polymerize to form long, insoluble fibrin strands, creating a stable blood clot with the help of platelets and additional stabilizing proteins. So now the question of what happens if you get a cut space. Now in space, blood clotting is abnormal and this can cause a severe threat to astronauts' lives. So some studies suggest that increased protein aggregation can increase the clot formation rate, while others point at reduced platelet counts contributing <coughs> to clot breakdown and movement throughout the body. But regardless, these consequences are critical because when a blood clot travels to a vital organ like the brain, heart, lungs, it can cause pulmonary embolisms, strokes, and even death. So, in space, or sorry, in Earth, the rate of this occurring is around 3%, but in space, this number triples drastically to 9%. This was shown in 2019 when an astronaut aboard the ISS actually developed a, a, a thrombus in the jugular vein, which was life-threatening, but because of the limited onboard supplies, there had to be emergency supplies, resupplies, sent back from Earth in order to treat this. So this is where our experiment comes in. We aim to investigate and elucidate the specific mechanisms behind blood clotting in microgravity. And this will lead the way towards preventative measures and effective therapy in the future. So we hypothesize that the increased clot kinetics and increased clot dynamics are the bodies we have compensating for the inherent weaknesses in clot integrity. To begin with, we will first talk about our freeze and fire experiment, which will talk about clot kinetics, the rate at which this clot forms, and then our ambitious experiment, which will talk about clot dynamics, the fluidity of the clot. So in order to understand uh, the rate at which the fibrinogen turns into a fibrin mesh, we're going to be using the BioBits system, the cell-free system, in order to produce both of these proteins in the ISS. Now, the reason behind this is not only because of the risk of denaturation, but also it mimics the physiological recruitment of both of these uh, proteins in an actual site of injury. Putting both the DNA of fibrinogen and thrombin into epinorph tubes with the cell-free system and buffers allow the thrombin to, after, after a little bit, to be cleaved into this fibrin monomer. So this fiber monomer, as it polymerizes with other monomers and turns into a fiber polymer, also known as a fiber clot, we're, we aim to track this visually through the molecule thioflavin T. Thioflavin T is characterized by its fluorescent indication upon protein aggregation, and it's commonly used in experiments with amyloid beta, but it's also applicable to our situation because as the monomers turn into this polymer, it reveals locations where the the thiophilin T can bind onto, and then fluoresce green. Now all this will be viewed under the P51 fluorescence viewer, which will indicate whether this clot has fully formed or not. And in space, we anticipate that this fluorescence will appear much quicker, which also means that the clot is forming much quicker. Now this goes back to how the acceleration of this process is based on the body's inherent way of compensating for the weaker clots, so that we can see this indication a lot quicker. But in order for this experimental, theoretical experiment to actually work in space, we've established some controls. For example, the experimental control, as outlined in the previous slides, 
positive control of analytic beta in order to confirm that thiophagin T is active in space. Negative control is removing one of the key proteins that allow us to ensure that everything is uh, working as is. And then removing the fluorophore allows us to monitor the biobits activation and if it's working properly. Finally, the addition of anticoagulants will allow us to explore different avenues of treatments and specific anticoagulants. So, what the Friesen Fly lacks understanding of biomesh dynamics and only focuses on in vitro biochemistry without focusing on the mammal subject. We aim to test this through our ambitious experiment where the acid can more accurately bond the human in space. So, first, we will get a blood sample from a mouse that has been exposed to microgravity. We will centrifuge the blood and isolate mouse plasma, which will consist of clotting points and platelets present in the plasma. We will then incorporate 1% of Fit C bond permanagen, a commonly used fluorescent protein, to visualize the presence of the fiber mesh. Now, the Fit C conjugated vision molecules will have Fit C molecules attached to specific sites on the finagen domains, specifically lights and residues. When thrombin, produced using the Vibits kit, cleaves the finagen, it forms fiber monomer with Fit C attached these permanent lice residues. Following this, the fibrin monitors will then aggregate and form a fibrin plot or column. Now, normally, on the uh, fit C on the fibrin mesh is excited by blue light at 495 nanometers, causing it to make green light at 117 nanometers. So, in our research experiment, we will utilize a technique called fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching or FRAB, where we first photo bleach a specific region of the fit C conjugated fibrin mesh. This is using a high intensity laser on a confocal microscope. Now, this photobiogen process causes the fluorescent fit C molecules in that region to lose their ability, ability to emit light by breaking down their fluorescent properties through high intensity light exposure and effectively renders them as non fluorescent. Now, after photobiogen, we'll observe the recovery of fluorescence in this now darkened area as non photobiogen and still fluorescent fit C molecules from surrounding areas diffuse into this bleached region. And by timing the specific recovery, we can understand more about the dynamics and fluid nature of the clot. So we propose that in space, clots will recover faster, which will indicate a more fluid and dynamic clot, but be less stable and prone to breaking apart. Now, this is based on data showing that microgravity increases the clot breakdown, which, which leads to more bleeding and <coughs> lacking the characteristics of an unstable clot. Additionally, a study proposed on astronauts kind of conducting astronauts revealed elevated levels of Terminal nitric activity suggesting that astronauts, suggesting the body of astronauts break clots down more rapidly than microgravity. So thus we suggest faster recovery, but reduced stability and strength in space clots. Now, plasmin, which is a key enzyme involved in breaking down this fiber mesh, will serve as a control for faster clot dissolution. This will allow us to compare how microgravity affects cloud recovery and stability against Earth conditions, and using plasmin in both environments ensures reliability for fat and controls for any potential experimental variability. So to quickly recap, what is the main difference between the freeze and fly and our vicious experiment? Well, while the freeze and fly only looks at the clot formation, the ambitious experiment attempts to take this one step further in order to understand the characteristics of this clot after it's been formed. And they use different uh, fluorescent indicators to better suit our experiment. So, where does the blood flow next? Well, Understanding the specific mechanisms behind blood clotting and microgravity allows us to target the specific most affected proteins in the coagulation cascade. Now this is going to allow us to use uh, specified anticoagulants and things like mechanical inhibitors, like thrombin inhibitors that slow down the rate of clotting. Now additionally, it can also give us some insight on the ways that my, uh, microbes or infections can enter a wound since the abnormal blood clots may indicate uh, less stable clots that the infections can enter towards. Finally, it, it helps with space surgery. Since it's never been performed in space, it can also open the avenue for that. So all these factors ultimately lead towards one main goal, and that's to have extended missions that ensure the crew's safety. Because if we can't control and trust What's in our own? What's going on in our own body? How are we to confidently explore the unknowns of the universe? That's why this must be addressed first. Yeah. We'd like to give a very huge thank you to our mentor, Dr. Alex Radakovich, our sponsor, Ms. Monk, our Jeans in Space teams and judges, Mr. Mark Bliss, 
And then our sponsors, staff and scientists at the ISS National Laboratory, Mini PCR, Boeing, and Google Lab Labs.